Movie promises a time of dread, but movie does not contain any judges. Also reading. Is it a bad sign if I'm already full? This feels biblically familiar. And it's time for Queen Bab Morda. The baby has been crying nonstop for the last minute, but conveniently stops as Queen Bab Morda passes so the nursemaid can get away clean. This child will have no power over me. <laughs> Start the ritual. The same sh that was said at my baptism somehow makes its way into the script. Use the dogs. Bring her back to me alive. Those two statements seem contradictory. Also, it's a good thing dogs understand English and will know not to kill anyone when they are hunting. Look, I know you want a shot of this person walking away from the castle with the castle in the background, and that is a worthy pursuit, but I can't imagine a single path that would have led them from the castle to this ridge. If you willingly walk with a baby into Mount Everest conditions, can you really be considered someone that is looking out for or taking care of said baby? <laughs> The dogs are still on the hunt for the nursemaid and the baby. Based on that full head of hair, they've been traveling for months. Why would it take this long for the dogs to find them? And I feel like at some point, Bav Morda would have started trying some new tactics. She's a goddamn sorcerer. Also, I hope you find cutaways to the baby's expressions exciting because it will happen another 1,137 times. No need to check my math. This is some Moses shit right here. You couldn't think of any other place or method to hide a baby than just doing a Moses. That's lazy. <laughs> nursemaid murder is my 37th least favorite murder to see in a movie. It falls right in between telephone repair people murder and Radio Shack employee murder. As we pan down to the baby on the river, how much time has passed? How many poops has this baby made in his diaper? He certainly hasn't eaten in a while. This movie is glossing over how needy babies are. Look, I tried putting a ping pong ball in the water of a river near the first hole of the golf course, hoping to collect it at a later hole down river, but instead it got caught up in riverside debris within 100 yards of where I put it in. My point is that this crass mass of a grass-ass baby raft should have been caught up in downed limbs, sediment buildup, or any other of a number of riverside blockages. Staring, staring, staring. Excitement? We'll push it downstream. And forget we ever saw it. Willow is our protagonist, right? I mean, the movie is named after his character. We're supposed to root for this guy, I assume. And he's been on screen for less than three minutes, and I already kind of hate him. Keep it quiet. Don't touch it. How do I do the first thing without violating the second thing? Just what is this windmill doing? There's nothing in its build that suggests it is transferring its wind power to another source. It's just a small tower with a pinwheel on it. A windmill actually mills something with the power the wind provides, like corn or wheat or barley. This band has two guitarists and two drummers and three wind instrument dudes, plus a violin. Is this a dwarf Mumford and Sons? Willow's trick is undone by the pig running out from under the table. But why didn't Willow know enough about pigs to put a small fence under there to keep it contained? But also, even if he'd done that, he'd still need literally every spectator to walk far away before he could take the pig out of there without being seen. So this trick is really too much work, if you ask me. Does he ever get his pig back? He's dejected here, rightfully so, but that pig is miles away by now, right? Magic is the bloodstream of the universe. I thought it was matter, or energy, or even love, but magic? <laughs> this is a small village and everyone clearly knows everybody and not a single goddamn person stops to help out a crying mims. This village, man. He was looking for somebody's baby. The f do you know that? Because it destroyed a crib? One beast we can kill, but there may be more. But what the f are they basing any of this on? That could have been a rabid wild dog. Why are they under the impression it was a strategic attack on their village? Just because they're f right doesn't make the conclusions they are jumping to with so little evidence any less stupid. That's what the beasts want. Let's give it back to them. Sacrificing a baby to a beast. I will consult the bones. Yahtzee! The bones tell me nothing. They at least tell you that you're actively helping waste the viewer's time, no? Well, Olaf, good. The safety of this village depends upon you. One of the few things this movie has done successfully so far is help us understand that a lot of the village thinks Willow is a joke. So it makes zero sense he would be the go-to for saving the village, even if he is the one who found the baby. Which I should also like to point out, they only have one random dog attack as evidence that this mystery baby needs to be taken elsewhere. Ah! Raise the bone! Why would you praise a long dead thing like a bone? A bone is basically evidence that time, nature, or a predator killed you. You're praising inevitable death. All this expedition needs is a leader. What does that mean? Someone who can find the way? Someone who has experience? Someone who simply has the authority to tell everyone else to shut up? You lack faith in yourself. More than anyone in the village, you have the potential to be a great sorcerer. Then why don't you let Willow be your apprentice and quit being a dick nut with your which finger holds all the magic in the world bulls? Now, when you're out there, listen to your own heart. Passing off Roxette lyrics is your parting words of wisdom. Acorns? They're magic. I always thought that was mushrooms, but if these acorns and some Bob Marley in the background will help me have that sinking into the shag carpet feeling, I'll give them a try. Anything you throw them at 
stones to stone. What if I throw them at a stone? Trolls that'll skin you alive and take your face off? Rannon? You know, I hate trolls. Look, Willow, you name that kid f***ing Rannon, he can give you any anytime he likes. We've never been apart. Then I'm thinking you should be way more excited about this exposition than you're letting on, Kaya. You need some me time. As they keep walking, this time in front of a waterfall, I have to wonder how much the Tolkien estate was paid for this film that is clearly ripping off Fellowship of the Ring. Making the guy who's carrying the baby also carry all the heavier stuff. On-screen puke is never funny or cool. I'm backtracking the nursemaid's trail. I'll find where she hid the baby. Backtracking a trail that is months old at this point? How the f*** will that work? And somehow it f***ing does. My queen, I have destroyed the castle at Galadorn. Holy shit! I know I had some edibles, but what the f*** is Skeletor doing in this movie? I need that baby alive. I must perform the ritual that will exile the child's spirit into oblivion. I'm not usually one to promote baby murder, but I feel like if you kill the baby, there is no baby to defeat you. I'm not sure why all this ritual nonsense has to happen, other than giving the heroes more time to get the baby back once you've kidnapped it at the beginning of the last act. And based on things we see, it's possible that the ritual has to be performed or the queen will still be destroyed, but the movie never actually f***ing tells us this. They hide in the brush as all these hunting... Are them dogs? And men and horses go by super close and no one smells anything amiss and f*** you. We'll keep to the woods. Oh, that should do it. Like, are you not already in the woods, dude? What kind of animal are they roasting? These look like back legs? So this would be the lower torso? What the f*** is this thing? Oh, I'm sorry. Peck, 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 peck. Well, I'm unfamiliar with it and I don't understand its meaning, but that is clearly a slur. See this acorn? I'll throw it at you and turn you to stone! It's amazing how Willow remembers the acorn in this situation, but it takes him forever to remember it for the rest of the movie. They almost die in several battles. Is there any particular reason Willow and his buddy chose to make a campfire directly below the mouthy prisoner from earlier? Couldn't they have walked, I don't know, a hundred yards in any direction and built a campsite where they could have had a fire and no commentary from a local dangling prisoner? <laughs> I don't know why I tried. This is the worst acting job Val Kilmer has done since the island of Dr. Moreau. Will you please take care of her? Going into battle, little ones. Find a woman to take care of her. I mean, men and all that, but he could have at least pointed Willow and Migosh in the direction of these baby-ready women he speaks of. Not when all I want to do is protect her. Yeah! This works. Goodbye, little one. Willow is literally leaving this baby in the hands of a prisoner he helped break out of jail. We'll be heroes. For giving the baby you were escorting to a stranger so you could go home early? Are you delusional? I stole the baby! And you are flying it right past Willow and Migosh because convenience, thy name is Willow. These guys fall into a hole trap, but then we see the little Pusian natives dancing around them back up on the surface. So what ancient pulling device did these borrowers use to pull the giants up out of the pits? Just count Kevin Paul. Holy sh! Where did you get that? Baby! I stole it from a stupid daikini! I would actually like to see how the brownies were able to steal the baby from Mad Mardigan. And that is the one event this movie chooses not to show every last second of. This is a discount Peter Pan so far, yo. Elora Dannon has chosen you to be her guardian. Me? Yes. She likes you. Wow, the guardian requirements for this savior baby seem to be more about keeping the baby from crying than about saving the universe in the future. Elora Dannon must survive. Holy Christ, ghost lady, you already basically said this. Why are you jump scare reminding me 30 seconds later? This building that the codes department apparently just ignores and lets slide. God damn, that shit is coming down hard and soon. Get out of here, my cook! I know that lady said she would eat us, but I think we'll be safe in this corner of the restaurant even though it's wide open and everyone can see us. Ooh, look at her. I could use a love potion on her. Perverted brownies. To be fair, those are the tastiest brownies. Wait. Discount Kevin Paul. Holy sh**. Oh, you are so beautiful. So someone has the power to make a love potion, but they don't have the power to make sure that it only affects attraction to the same species? If you're human or human-like, and there's even the slightest chance you could end up in a relationship with, say, a giraffe, why the f*** would you take that chance? Yeah! There's not enough pot in the world to make these brownies tolerable. Not you! I mean, what are the chances? 
Also, the 80s sure did love throwing men dressed up as women into their films whenever they had a chance, even if it wasn't remotely germane to the plot. I would love to hear the thought process for this scene in the writer's room. So Val Kilmer will be dressed up like a woman and everyone will find it funny. I mean, maybe. But why is he dressed up like a woman? Well, we see he's been f***ing this chick and her husband's about to come in, so he needs to make it seem like she was just hanging out with one of her girlfriends. You realize this is mostly for kids, right? Then why are we doing a tie-in with Quaker Oats? Larry, we said we would never discuss that. Wanna breed? Imagine all the weird questions the parents got from their kids in the audience when this line was uttered. Of course, nothing could have been worse than explaining why a duck and a human would try to have sex with each other a couple years earlier. Lucas really didn't know who his audience was, did he? Willow can clearly see that Mad Mardigan is in no position to stop the horses, so what exactly does he expect him to do? Warwick Davis is a likable guy, but the character of Willow is a chore. The wheel explosion will have such little effect on the situation, I'm not even sure why they showed it. How long can a couple horses carry a sideways carriage in the mud? You may never know. Mad Mardigan, you never, ever drive that fast with an infant. That asshole just saved your life. What the f***, Willow? I do not like you at all. I won't be needing this anymore. Rule survives this for a frustrating amount of some time. None of these writers see the obvious pink and blue people doing a terrible job of hiding. You're a great warrior and a swordsman. And you're ten times bigger than I am, stupid. I'm guessing Nolans have never heard the phrase, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Hurry, big dogs. Are any dogs actually small to a brownie? I feel like just dogs in general would be a problem. This is a very dangerous looking throne room. Why risk half your royal guard falling to their deaths? She is kind of cute when she's quiet. I think other than a couple of tears, we haven't heard this baby make one goddamn sound. To the point, I'm starting to get a little worried there's something wrong with her. No baby is that quiet! Go to sleep. Nobody will find you here. <laughs> I'll be back with Finn Rizal very soon. How the f*** would Willow know that nobody would find the baby here? He knows the queen is after her, and they've almost been captured a few times at this point. He couldn't ask Mad Mardigan to stay around for a little while longer? Willow is the goddamn worst. <laughs> Okay, I did not personally expect Finn Rizal to be a sugar glider squirrel possum thing, but neither did you. You know how in those Ice Age movies they keep making Scrat a thing because audiences really responded to him in the first movie, but then eventually you just hate Scrat with the fire of a thousand hells and he only gets more and more screen time as the movies go by and you don't understand why? Yeah, that's how I feel about these f***ers. We'll never keep up with those horses. You definitely shouldn't be able to, but unfortunately for us you will catch up with them and we will have to keep enduring this brownie nonsense. <sighs> Hurry, practice the chant, I told you. Did the bad mortar guards know this animal was Roselle? And if so, why did they bring her along too? And why didn't they just kill her? Why the f*** didn't bad mortar kill her in the first place? She's got a murder boner for this baby, so you would think she would have off the one sorceress who's as powerful as her when she had the chance. One of the Lord of the Rings had wagons and was shitty. Hit the green and band, by the blue and If you enjoy watching Willow say a spell incorrectly and keep turning Roselle into a different animal, then you're in luck. It happens another 743 times before the movie ends. No need to check my mouth. Stupid fat Come on, Mad Mardigan. Let's get Laura Denon out of here. Since Mad Mardigan just got hit with the love dust and Willow was the first person he saw, shouldn't Mad Mardigan be wanting to bump uglies with him now? I mean, Kevin Pollock fell in love with a cat for a second when he was hit with it. Unless, of course, the love dust is homophobic, which in the 80s probably was. The power bonus is a curious thing. Make a one-man pause, another upswing. Some will stay at a distance to go. More than a feeling, that's the power of so here the evil lady and Mad Mart are going to have a back and forth dance of who is evil and who is good and who is attracted to whom, and it's really ultimately pretty useless. Oh, but the two actors got married off screen, so I guess there's some chemistry here, even if I can't see it. Your touch is worth a hundred thousand deaths. Okay, no one who has yet to die a single death should be allowed to make this sweeping statement about what it feels like to die. You are great. Yeah, not sure why the movie felt the need to wait till the hour 14 mark to show us. Movie makes sledding look awesome and useful if you're ever accused of a crime, but it really depends on the snowfall and there being a big hill nearby. These guys go on horseback after a dude who sledded down this f***ing sharp f***ing face cliff. Another edition of Freeze Frame Fun. Here's not Val Kilmer riding along with not holy f*** that stunt double and or dummy is wearing a Warwick Davis mask. There's no way they didn't crash hard and cause terrible damage after sledding into that hut. And <laughs> let's remember, Willow is carrying a baby, which is now dead, of course. Oh, go f*** yourself. Oh, go f*** yourself again. What the hell happened up there? I assume when you refer to there, you were talking about the writer's room. And I honestly have no f***ing clue what happened to cause a scene as ridiculous as this to occur. 
there was a rug covering the trap door, then how was Mad Mardigan staring up at Sorsha through the cracks of it? Luckily for everyone, Sorsha chooses to come down here by herself, which is about the dumbest f***ing thing she could have done. And the majority of the movie shows her being very smart and very resourceful until the plot needs her to act otherwise. But at least she eventually falls in love. Seriously, just f*** this movie. People are killing people and it's violent, but I legit have no idea who is whom. At the crow flies, you fools! It's amazing that not only did Willow screw up the spell and not turn Roselle back into a human, but he also turned her into one of the few animals that would actually be helpful for them on the journey. Like, if he turned her into a platypus, they would all be super screwed right now. Holding me too tight. Well, I don't want you to get away. You waited two to three days to have this conversation? They say you only chase, tackle, and pin down the ones you love. Willow, the one. Turn me back into my human form! Oh yeah, that was a thing a while back, and now it's suddenly a thing again, and I bet it's gonna be really important. Roselle just said that everything at Terra's Lean is the work of Bav Morta, but if that's the case, why did she or her army leave all the f***ing weapons behind? Ah, looks like these are the trolls with the best sense of dramatic timing. Uh, I think this Willow who actually has magic sub-development is possibly the most offensive thing about this movie. And it's also stupid. These Ray Harryhausen-inspired monsters are kind of fun, and I don't expect this to be at T2 levels in 1988, but at the very least, you could have been at Tremors levels. Yep, now you got him dead to rights, and you're just gonna kiss him, aren't you? There are a lot of poorly handled character arcs in this film, but none worse than turning a badass fighter like Sorsha into a lovesick schoolgirl because Mad Mardigan fed her some half ass poetry that she also knows he's already forgotten about. I'm telling you right now, if Skullman doesn't take off his mask and reveal himself to be Pee Wee Herman, I am going to riot. Let's ride. But you've been doing that the whole goddamn movie. Well, assault at first light. They have zero clue what Bav Morta is going to do with Laura and when, but sure, wait till first light. I'm sure it will be fine. <laughs> this feels close enough to premature celebration for me to call it. Use the ship to chant. Protect yourself. If Willow can't even get the transformation spell right, how is he getting all these other ones down? And when has he even had time to learn them? You're not warriors. You're pigs. This moment in history would eventually become known as the fuck the police of the Middle Ages. Begin the ritual! You've had the baby for the better part of a day. Why didn't you already begin the ritual? Especially considering this entire movie, you've made it seem like it's the most urgent of urgent things that urgently need to happen. Why is Bab Morta bandaged up like a mummy? Was that part of the ritual as well? Come thunder! Come lightning! It's weird that this movie knows and uses my college girlfriend's safe words. My favorite behind the scenes story I've read about this film is that all these pigs just kept trying to f each other on set and the crew had to keep hosing them off to get them to stop. I feel like that would have been a much more interesting storyline to follow than what actually happens in the movie. And also, here's a sin for not allowing the pigs to get down and dirty. Let them be. Is, is that electrical tape? I have an idea how to get inside the castle. An entire army of trained soldiers at hand who saw only defeat but are now willing to listen to f***ing Willow for a plan of attack. <laughs> As bloody hands, which lady praises the whatever, I'm left to wonder just what in the name of f all is this movie supposed to be? Your children will come to remember this day. They will not. I mean, they might remember the story their father tells them, but not the day itself, because they are not there. Roselle is a liar. It's great how all these troops are coming out of these hidey holes and such, but this is all mere yards from the enemy wall. How did they get into these hidey holes unseen? Did they tunnel and burrow? Because I think the movie just put them there for surprises, and I hate it. This movie gives zero f**ks about spatial awareness. Light the 13th candle! Considering the time frame so far for this ritual, I'm assuming the 13th candle will be lit sometime around the close of business next Wednesday. Awesome! Another magical person with powers we don't know the extent of fights another magical person with powers we don't know the extent of. Nothing more exciting than that! Somehow, two witches fighting over the same wand end up animating a f**ing weird-ass elevated fire pit thing, turning it into a Star Wars droid. Win this whole for me. Man, like, I would totally do that, but I don't remember you for sh brother. So, you've come back to die with your city. No, I came back to stop you. Well, that was nice of them to give Willow something to fight. He needs to feel like he helped. The good witch scores points by punching the bad witch in the face. Witch punching! Willow defeats the evil witch with street-level sleight-of-hand bullshittery, and I'm not buying it. Eat me, movie. <laughs> Guys, I no longer know what's going on. I think the most unbelievable part of this movie is that everyone in the village is actually excited this asshole is back. Willow really sucks as a person, guys. My name's Alan and I bought a giraffe! Damn, yeah. Come on. I'm not gonna be ignored, Dan. Instead, I wanna do a little thing I call drilling a hole in my head. I'm gonna read your thoughts. 
But see now, you come here from a great distance. <laughs> Therefore, in the interest of public safety, he is hereby sentenced to be recycled. I bring you love. Have you found the child? The search goes on, my queen. A blundering fool. I'll go myself to the dwarf's cottage in a disguise. There it is! <laughs> the island! A lucky sign. The gold inside will soon be mine. On the penal asteroid of Rurapente. Give me the power, I beg of you!